After all, he does write this. He has nothing, nothing at all, I tell you. Naturellement, as a child, he showed great promise. But yes, but today, he is spinning. Everyone knows that. I'm not trying to defend him, but he... he... is certainly one of the most eminent composers we have. After all, monsieur, he's not a Cimarosa, nor a Scarletti, nor a Salieri, nor... <laughs> I could name at least a dozen others. Yeah, look at this. Mozart wants to give a subscription concert, and he is charging three golden admission. Although the list has been open for a week already, only Baron von Swieten has taken the ticket. <laughs> oh, good morning, Herr Mozart. Good morning. Is Herr Hofmeister No, he's not. I brought you two string quartets. One to be copied, and the other is to pay for the work. I want it in a few days, and wish me luck, because I'll be needing it in the next hour. Our best composer. He can't even pay to have his own music copied. <laughs> I wouldn't go to his concert if it were free. So much the better. Herr Mozart and those who love his music can do without your kind. You can save your three gulden and go listen to Scarlatti, Cimarosa, Salieri, and a dozen others you couldn't even name. I met him, I... What do you know about Mozart? How many of his operas have you heard? Have you heard any of his sonatas or divertimenti? No, if you had, you wouldn't talk about him like this. Mademoiselle, I must say that I... And you just stand there and listen without objecting. But every man's entitled to his opinion. I've always I... bought my music in your shop. However, if you allow such talk about Herr Mozart, I shall go elsewhere. Good day. Constance, wait for me. Where did you disappear to? I was at Hofmeister's to have some music copied. To give to the landlord tomorrow's the first, well, you know. Gong, he'd rather have one good and then a whole outfit. Perhaps, but you see, I do think of it. When you see the Lord Chamberlain, don't forget you want something from him. And not he from you. And that he's a court figure. And that good manners are important. So please, when you go in there, do be sure to keep your collar straight and wipe off your shoes. Be serious. I swear, if I don't come back with 50 ducats, you'll never see me again. You'll never stop talking nonsense. Go on. Buy some candy for little Carl and a goose so we have something for supper.
Good morning. Ah, the court composed. Sorry, but you'll have to wait a moment. As usual, please. Thank you. Good morning, Herr Strack. Herr von Mozart. How are you? You know, I once played here. Yeah? Let's see. About 29 years ago. I can even remember what I played. What can be keeping Salieri? I said I wanted to have a talk with him first. Here I am, here I am, Your Excellency. Here, Mozart, I remember you were just a child who tried to kiss the Empress. And you were so fond of the Archduchess Marie Antoinette that you asked her to marry. Yes, but nothing came of it in the end. I'd go about it differently today. The Bohemian court is preparing to honor the occasion of His Majesty's coronation and asks that the court composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart be commissioned to write an opera. We therefore request His Majesty's Chamberlain to lend full support to this project. The Bohemian nobility is of the opinion that no better composer could be chosen. It will be recalled that Mozart, in his operas The Marriage of Figaro and Don Giovanni, has given proof of his talent and his unusual ability. <laughs> and they address this to your excellency. Yes, it's addressed to me. And I'm still not over the shock I experienced the day that that punky It's difficult for me even to say the word that Figaro was first performed. Say word ballare, signor Contino. Enough. Whenever I hear that tune, I take it as a personal insult. They haven't gone as far as they have in France yet, and we will not fall so low. Yeah? What's that? <laughs> Well, your Mozart plays very well. It's very German, good for lackeys, superficial brilliance. I'll tell you why I asked you to come here. I'd like a little advice, Maestro. What shall I do about this? Mozart has revolutionary tendencies, and any opera he writes is likely to reflect them. On the other hand, I must be sure not to offend the Bohemian court. I'd like to make a suggestion, Excellency. May I? You can give Maestro Mozart the commission, but then arrange to put, a, uh, what's the word, a muzzle on him. Uh, tell him the musical content will be supervised and that you will select the libretto. Mozart will never accept those conditions. Of course he won't. But if he refuses, Your Excellency's problem will be solved. Automatically. Who is playing? Mozart, Your Excellency, one of his sonatas. It's an outrage! Playing the piano instead of sitting there quietly and waiting until he's asked to come in. I know that this is contrary to etiquette, but I was never strong in etiquette, was I? His Excellency will now receive the court composer. Huh? Please be seated. I beg Your Excellency to forgive my unintentional rudeness. Yes, well, we won't discuss the matter. Uh, Mozart, do you know why you were asked to come here today? Yes, I do, Your Excellency. And I beg Your Excellency to allow me to go to Prague to compose the opera. I realize how much this depends on your, your gracious indulgence. Yes, I know. Uh, let us consider the question of librettos. The librettos which were quite acceptable in the days of His Majesty Kaiser Josef, Don Giovanni, or your... your your Figaro are completely unacceptable today. And if you still have such ideas... I, I have no ideas, Excellency. If Your Grace will furnish a libretto, I will set it to music. Yeah. Well, I never expected this of you. One learns through experience. Hmm. No, not always. As for the orchestral accompaniments to your operas, I find them very overwritten. Far too many notes. Appalling. Just appalling, as His Majesty used to say. Oh, but that depends on the scene. No, says. my dear fellow, it's a question of fundamental principles. Agreed. The accompaniment not too heavy. Your Excellency's wish is my command. Another thing, your preference for Bassett horns. His Majesty despises Bassett horns. There'll be no Bassett horns. I will follow instructions. Furthermore, you are to work in close association 
with the Imperial Director of Music, Maestro Salieri, and you are to follow his instructions implicitly. Excellency. I see you would like to think it over. I can understand that. Please do. Take as long as you wish. We have time. I accept your conditions. When may I expect the commission? No. No. I need money, Your Excellency. Indeed. It's a good thing you mentioned that. I've been wanting to talk to you about that very subject. I am told that you borrow from dubious persons and that you do not hesitate to frequent common pawnbrokers, even though you are in the service of His Imperial Majesty. But you have done so repeatedly with no attempt to conceal it. Your Excellency, I wish there were somewhere else to go for money. I have a wife who's not well. I have a child. What can I do? Work harder and save your money. Save money? Out of the 800 gulden a year that I receive as court composer, I work day and night. For months, I try to find work as a choir leader. It's hopeless. Nobody wants me. I can't understand what's the matter. I'll tell you what's the matter. You're unreliable and arrogant. Because I sometimes say what I really think, I've no right to do that. No. Not when you depend on the generosity of others. That's the right word, Your Excellency. When a man has to depend on the generosity of baronesses or countesses and is kept waiting in the antechamber with hairdressers and milliners until the highness is in the mood to play a few wrong notes, completely neglecting the rhythm. On the generosity of archbishops who insult him and mistreat him. I only want decent treatment and respect for my talent. And not favors and... 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 Extremely impertinent, Air Court Composer. Extremely impertinent. I am sorry, Your Excellency. And if my behavior is subject to censure, because I am forced to frequent usurers and pawnbrokers, it is surely not my fault. Now may I leave, Your Excellency? I've been listening carefully to all the arguments you put forth, even though I must say I'm in complete disagreement with you. When we have further news on this Bohemian affair, you'll be notified. I thank Your Excellency. I always let them take advantage of me. Well, as long as your husband likes this. My mother. How are you, my child? Isn't Wolfgang here? No, he had an appointment. Too bad. I have a little surprise for him. What's that? I brought him a visitor. Who? No guess. Come on. I've no idea. <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Madame Court Composer. How long have you been in Vienna? Since this morning. And my first visit is to you. Now, I brought the whole family along to have coffee. I hope we're not putting you out. No, 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 I don't mind in the least. No. <laughs> well, she doesn't seem to like your little surprise, does she? Yes, I do, Louise. Really. I'm so glad to see you. Go on and make us all a nice cup of coffee, Lina. And Sophie, you go to the bakery and buy some pastry. Constanza will give you the money. Yes, Lena, the coffee. Make enough for everybody. No, go on, go on. You can ask them to charge it. Yes, charge it. Wolfgang will have the money when he comes. I'll set the table. Come on in and sit down. You've got company. Frau Lange. Louis? And your mother-in-law came with her. And the young ladies, Josef and Sophie. It's very thoughtful of my mother-in-law to pay us a visit, isn't it? But I just remembered I must go to the theatre. Hans, goodbye. If anyone should ask, you haven't seen sure. me. Sure. <laughs> what are you going to do in Vienna, Louise? Try to turn your husband's head, of course. Be quiet. That was the past. It's over with. Besides, Louise is no longer interested. Well, she has as many men as she wants. You're very kind. I appreciate it. Have you heard what they say about her latest victim? That's enough. Louise is now a married woman, and I won't hear any nasty remarks made about her husband. They say he earned 700 gulden, and Mother judges him by that. 
Now, I will not stand for any more of this impertinence. What do you all know about it anyway? When your father died, I was left without a single penny, no inheritance. But I had four daughters, so what could I do except marry you off? And Mother goes to any lengths to accomplish her purpose. <laughs> Poor Mozart could sing a song about that. Sophie! Oh, oh, my foot. What was that you said about Mozart? Trapped the poor man by you and Constanza, just like a fly on flypaper. Now, Mother, this is... You true. made him sign an agreement. He had to marry her or pay 300 gulden a She's year. She's lying, Mother. She always lies. He wouldn't have married her otherwise. That is not so. Constanza tore the paper to pieces. That's right. I tore it up and threw it away. I think that's enough. I didn't come back here to be bored by your childish quarrels. Then tell me, why did you come back? Don't worry. You'll see. And if anyone thinks I thought only of money for my daughters, I would like to know why I chose this Mozart. He isn't even able to send Constanza up to Baden for a treatment when she's sick. Are you sick? What's wrong? The poor girl has a bad foot. She can hardly walk. Now stop teasing your sister, do you hear? You're going to Baden for a cure, Constanza. You simply have to earn enough money. What's the husband for? Look, he's in there playing billiards. <laughs> With whom? By himself. Pardon me, Maestro Mozart, for intruding on you this manner. It's I who come as petitioner today to you. You a petitioner, my dear Chamberlain. An opera, Maestro, an opera. Any libretto you wish, bastitones, the law, as many as you like. The accompaniments orchestrated just as you wish. And here's a cash advance, a cash advance. I am sorry to disappoint you, my dear Chamberlain. Please tell His Majesty I don't take orders anymore. I intend to compose from now on just to please myself. Oh, but you don't actually contemplate composing music for that silly clown, that showman Shikaneda. He'll just keep you cooling your heels in his waiting room. <laughs> You've come to see me, Volta. Yes, and with deep humility. To what do I owe the honor? You once mentioned that you needed music for play you with. Asked you once, a dozen times. Could it be an opera? It could be an opera. A German opera? A German opera. With a full orchestra? As large as you wish. You have nothing against basset horns? They're my favorite instrument. <laughs> you have the libretto? It's almost done. Here's the first part. Ah, the Magic Fruit by Emanuel Chicanella. Hmm. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Don't think that you can buy me off. Don't force me. However, if their highnesses, excellences, and majesties force me to, I'll have to show them that I can make a milk wagon horse do tricks, too. Oh, a milk wagon horse? That's very flattering, I must say. <laughs> What's so funny? Go away! The actors won't respect me at all anymore if you keep on making fun of me. Uh, 23, 24, 25. And there's a advance. Polyhymnia will be eternally grateful to you. You like the music? I'll write it. A bargain. You must have patience, Miss Francis. Your foot will soon get better, I'm sure. And you mustn't worry about the money. The advance is already spent. What's the difference? Chicaneda has plenty of money, believe me. You get it after the work is done. Keep your chin up. And watch Carly to make sure no harm comes to our little captain. Sing now. Ba 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 <laughs> Bravo, he has a tin here. Thank the Lord he won't be a musician. Wolfgang, yes? I want to say something to you before I go away. Louise is in Vienna. Really? Since when? Three days ago. And she hasn't come to see me yet? She's undoubtedly waiting for me to go away. What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean, oh, Wolfgang. Oh, always the same old story. Wolfgang, oh, Wolfgang, promise. Now stop that, Wolfgang. <laughs> you must promise that you'll throw her out of the house. Because I know that she'll come when she hears that I'm gone away. After all, she is your own oh, sister. Oh, but look, I simply don't care. You promise me now? Promise me or I won't go away. All right, I promise you. But you're not fair. She's a married woman now, and I'm happy with my stunts. You've given me your promise, right? Oh, Wolfgang, darling. Oh, I forgot to lock the trunk. Oh, wait a minute. I wish you a happy journey and a speedy recovery. Thank I'll you, work. and please take care of Wolfgang, won't you? Oh, of course, I will. Thank you. Come on, hurry up, Stancy. Let's get the crown prince on. Up we go, Captain. Ah. Watch your finger. Put the bag. The bag. Goodbye, from Stancy. Bye. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Mama. Bye. 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 And come back soon. Well, so much for that. Now let's get to work. Come to the Golden Barrel this evening, and I'll introduce you to my tool. 
Uns und dir wird das Freihaus nur fromm. Deine Kunst soll uns führen zum Ruhm. Und soll dich von den Sorgen befreien. Maestro, friend, bother. Although a man who deals in words, tonight I shall not say very many. We welcome you, Mozart. You have come here to meet our company in these modest surroundings. Yes, we cannot offer you the magnificence of the theater of his imperial majesty, or such honors as he confers. However, we can and we will give you what no imperial court in the world would ever deign to offer you. Ah. We shall start at the bottom by introducing the low tones, the bass singer of our troupe, Franz Gerl. Franz? <laughs> You know your sister-in-law and me. Our talents are well known to you. Last but not least, our soprano, Andy. What about me? Oh, yes, tells you. Um, this is our soubrette, Susie Gale. Our Susie's singing talents are overshadowed by other qualities. Obvious qualities. <laughs> Annie! Annie! Mademoiselle Cotley! She's our lyric soprano. She will sing the role of Pamina. Here I am. All right, make a curtsy and apologize to the maestro for being late on his first visit here. I came as fast as I could. Oh, please don't apologize. How do you do? What will you sing? Sing? The poor girl's out of breath. Give her a chance to rest. You're out of breath? Nonsense. Don't you want the maestro to hear your voice? Oh, please. Now, come on, sing for him. Sing das Falschen for him. Oh, yes, yeah, das, das Falschen. Good, das Falschen. Who'll accompany her? Well, surely someone can play das Falschen for Annie. I will play for you, if you will allow me. I'll be glad to. Come. Come. We're counting on you. Oh, 
That was love. Oh, that was wonderful. And now that we've had our song, wine and women. Uh. <laughs> Surely you would have liked to stay longer, Helmut. Perhaps. But I'm enjoying this too. All of the other singers live near the theater. I know that you don't live very far from us in the Raunsteingasse. Mm hmm? Amina. I'm so happy I'm going to sing the so part. So am I. Do you know what it's about? Oh, yes, the director has told us. About the struggle between light and darkness. About the queen of the night. About the temple of truth. It's a wonderful story. So you liked it, did you? Oh, yes, only I don't understand it. <laughs> a flute that's magic and performs miracles. Ah, but the prince, that was different. Pamina, or whatever he's called. And Pamina, the princess, and their deep love for each other. There is a love that knows no bounds, a love that the forces of evil cannot destroy. As Ashi Kaneda said. So, you understood that part of it? Yes. It's amazing. What do you mean? So young and knowing so much about love. Yes, I... True love? A deep love. Yes, a love that knows no bounds, which the forces of evil cannot destroy. That's very sweet. And very sad. Why do you say that? Oh, it would be wonderful to be loved like that. It's midnight. You must go home. Tamino is given a portrait of Pamina and is enchanted by her beauty. He falls in love with the picture and sings this aria to it. I am reproached because my accompaniment sometimes drowns out the voices and that's why I've called this special rehearsal. Will the clarinets look at bar 16? Remember C natural A. In bar 17 it's C sharp A. Ready?
Thank you, gentlemen. I won't need the orchestra anymore. And you others may go too. I'd like a solo rehearsal with Mademoiselle Gottlieb, please. Ah. Uh -huh. Solo rehearsal for Annie Gottlieb. The rest may Harry, come on, children. Everybody out. Please. The rest of the tea when Pamina tells Sarastro why she ran away. It's right there. Please. What is it? What's the matter? Please, once more. This just won't do. Maybe I should leave also. Yes. I should leave? Yes, you too. I only hope they let the audience in there for the performance. Once more, please. Perhaps it'll come this time. Lovely. You can't go in. The maestro is rehearsing the great love scene with many of the couples. Is there anything that's worrying you? Come, you can tell me. Must I say it first? Surely you must know. Both of us know. You stand very well. Only it needs more spirit. We're going to work together very well. That's the important thing. Nothing else. You understand? I understand. But... What can I do? Just what I do. Don't think about it. Maestro Mozart. Ah, oh, hello, Zussel. Back from Baden already? Yes, your wife's better and sends her love. May I see you alone? Surely, we've finished rehearsing. Thank you very much. Please be at rehearsal tomorrow. Come, Zussel. Uh, little Canary, get her voice back. Good, good, good. I spoke with Chicken Aidan. He won't give you any more advances. 
Why, is everything spent already? Yes, it cost 12 gulden to go to Bath, and then there were the doctor's fees, and your wife's been there 10 days already. Hmm. Something must be done, but what? Well, Countess Liefenberg might take some lessons. That's a bright idea. She hasn't paid for the lessons she took last year. Why not dash off a little music for Count Dame's waxworks? Why, has another of our precious nobles died? I don't think so. <laughs> and he certainly won't order any new music. And that leaves only Weitzlander. A money lender. You have no choice. I won't get anywhere with him. I owe him too much already. I'm afraid I've no alternative but the pawn broke up. Even if the Chamberlain explodes. Certainly makes the housework a lot easier. What? When the silver's been pawned. <laughs> That's not something to laugh about. Say, how did you get in the house? The door was open. It couldn't be. I'm sure I locked it. You may have, but it was open. You come to see Herr Mozart? Is he at home? No, I... Then I shall wait. I see, but I have no idea when he'll come back, or whether he'll come back at all. He has been working at the theater. He'll be back. Is it, by any chance, about a commission? I shall explain why I'm here to your master. Don't ask silly questions and go back to your work. Oh. What do we do now? He looks like a noble lord. Yes, or he wouldn't have talked like that to me. Mm. Just let him wait. Aren't you afraid of him? I'm not afraid of any man. I could fall my piano now that I'm using the one in the theater. Herr Mozart, I'm glad you came. There's someone to see you. Who is it? A very strange man. Gives me the creeps. Predator. I don't believe so. I think he's come with a commission. Oh, oh but a handsome man with a commission doesn't frighten me. He's an angel, a saint. Forgive me for intruding in this manner. It was by no means sure that I'd be back. May I ask who you are? My name really does not matter. Is it about a commission? Yes. It's about a commission. I'm at your service. Dance tunes, wedding marches, dinner music at reasonable prices. What is your pleasure? A requiem. A requiem mass? Yes, a requiem mass. If you're willing to accept. For whom? What use would the name be to you? For a soul. This is no ordinary commission. I'll pay you well. Fifty ducats. The rest will be yours when the work is finished. Fifty. And when? In two months. At the latest three. You're hesitant. Well, I won't insist now. I shall come back. No, no, I'm, I'm not hesitating. I accept it, of course, and I thank you, thank you very much. I promise I'll do my very best. Allow me. One moment, please. I don't know where to send the work. I shall return. Time is coming. Thank you. Thank you again. Goodbye. Fifty ducats, can you imagine? Why, he must have been sent from heaven. Why didn't he say who he was? Or for whom the requiem is intended? What? Who cares? It's for somebody and I'm not curious. Come on. Tomorrow I'll send twenty ducats to Constance. Now we have money, things will change. <laughs> Well, you can't imagine all the work a theater manager is expected to do. Write the plays, move the scenery, pay the actors, play the lead roles, bribe the censors. He has to placate lovesick prima donnas and this. The whole baggage has got to be taken on an expensive outing to keep peace in the family. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like a kerchief to cry into? You leave Annie alone or I'll take you over my knee. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much to make you laugh, does it? Why shouldn't I? Blind man's fuck. Uh, Come on, Annie, you're in right now. <laughs> on your feet now, Annie. Come on, up we go. Human virtue has no place in opera. 
Oh, virtue has its place in church, but it's a bore when you put it on the stage. As a matter of fact, it's generally overrated. Did you invite me to the country to give a speech? I want to chase the bugs out of your bonnet. You and your obsession with humanity. There's no humanity, just men. Tall, short, thin, fat, smart, and stupid. Absolutely, and a smart man loves women and not humanity. Love is what people want. Love and laughter. Love and laughter. My opening aria. Mm. No, we'll place it at the end if we use it at all. You said you wanted a love song. <laughs> Mademoiselle Gottlieb. Mademoiselle Gottlieb, please. It'll come here and play this morning. <laughs> what energy. <laughs> you enjoy it? We simply don't like the idea of holding rehearsals when we're on a picnic. No, we'd much rather play like children. Yes, play hide and seek. And ring around the rosy. <laughs> 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 Why, you clowns. How can you make fun of your benefactor like that? <laughs> I'm glad you decided to come on this picnic. You said you didn't want to. I changed my mind. A day as lovely as this may not come again. Oh? You heard of this dance?
<laughs> oh, stop it. Shame on you. Go hide somewhere now. I'll count up to 50, and the one who finds you will get one ducat. If it's girl, I'll throw in a whole goose. Now, are you ready? One, two, three, four, two, four, five. There, up there. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Stay there, no cheating. Why, you're almost to fifty. <laughs> what, He's in his what, second what, childhood. Uh, what an idiot. Uh, Forty-one. <laughs> Forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find us. There! Shh! Get the ducket if you don't find them. they've left now, we can go down. Oh, but what if they come back? Well, it'll soon be night. We can't stay up here forever. Just a bit longer. Hmm? Don't talk. Look at me. Little Pamina. With her love that knows no bounds. A love that the forces of evil cannot destroy. I came because there's something I want to say to you. What? I will not sing. The director can find another Pamina, I'm sure. What do you mean he won't sing? This is nonsense. Do you realize what you're saying? I just can't. I know I mustn't think about it. I've tried, but it's no use. It'll be better if someone else sings the role. I want to leave. Come here, everybody. Where are those two? No, you will remain and sing. Do you think you're alone? You're in each note I write, you know that. You can't go away now. I need you. I won't let you go. Godly. I thought you knew. The whole town's talking about it. She looks as though she couldn't count up to three, doesn't she? They're always together, and he's not a bit ashamed of what he's doing, not even before me. Well, it's never very serious with him. Oh, that's what you think. This time it's altogether different. I feel sorry for poor Constanza. Your father is here with Herr von Bondini. They're all at the Golden Barrel. Do you know who Herr von Bondini is? No. The great impresario, the, the chicanator of the impresarios, and try to make a good impression. Von Bondini talked to me. He wants to take Annie to Italy. Should I let her go? 
I thought I'd ask. It could be the making of her career, of course, but then my magic flute's also involved. So if you say no, You'll have the chance to see Milan, Rome, Venice, Paris, London. The tour will take over a year. I'm happy for you, my child. This is the start of a great career. I will make you a famous star in a year, I promise you. I have created many, many great artists. You'll be able to get away from this small-time theater and away from this atmosphere. What does the director say? Oh, he's quite satisfied. He will get Malti Ducati and another artist. But... When would I go? You should be ready to leave in about a week, isn't that right? Mm, I prefer to leave the day after tomorrow, but it's not possible by then. I cannot leave, though. I just can't go now. What is this? Why not? I have to sing Pamina. I just can't go away and leave him like this. Who? Yes, whom does the signorina mean? She means Mozart. I suspected this. And that's exactly the reason... But, Father... ...why you are going to go on this tour. I'll speak to Herr Mozart about this, Annie. I know that he will listen to reason. Please. I don't want you to talk with him, Father. Let me tell him about it. And if he says I may go, I'll go. Oh, naturalmente, signorina Annie. should speak with the compositore Mozart. Who knows better than me what a wonderful opportunity it is for an artist to appear in Italia, Londra, Parigi. Talk to him after rehearsal. And when you get home this evening, I don't want to hear another word. No more foolishness. Come here for mommy. Andiamo. Adio. Hello there, Wolfgang. Yes. Yes. And it looks like I arrived just in time. Affectionately dedicated to Mademoiselle Annie Gottlieb. In each note, all your love and admiration. Why don't you keep your nose out of my affairs? You ought to know how much I detest that. A new offer, a new love affair, as usual. But it's not a love affair. Ah. It's more. And what if it is? It still wouldn't mean anything. It's just the same story all over again. What do you mean? Listen, Wolfgang. If anyone really knows you, I do. I understand. You must have inspiration. A muse with whom you can fall in love. You write your loveliest melodies then. Each more beautiful than the last. You're irresistible then. <laughs> oh, but when there's no more necessity for love to inspire you, then everything's different again. The muse has done her sacred duty. The muse can go her way. You say that, Louise? Yes, I said it. You talk as though I were the one who left you. <laughs> you would have, if I'd waited long enough. Is that so? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Tell me it's not true. Think of how many muses came after me. You make it sound as if I'm a <laughs> oh, Don't monster. get excited now. I consider this your good side. Can you imagine what a tragedy it would be if you really fell in love each time? For example, with this little girl. You could break the poor girl's heart. Good shame. Yes. However, what I really came for, I want a new aria from you. I'm going on a concert tour. Your arias were always my most successful ones. But as I see, you have no time. Well, some other time. Goodbye, Moscow. Yeah, wait, Louise. Of course I'll write you an alley. I can always find time for that. Uh, thank you, court composer. Louise, if Stancy could see you, she'd scratch her eyes out. <laughs> Why, have I misbehaved? All I've done was scold you. She should be grateful to me for what I've just said. Well, I'm her sister, so I can say it. She's really not pretty, not much of a housewife, and as a muse... She's not that either. All the same, she's the best wife for you, by far. By far, the best of all the women in the world. The only one, really. She always will be. As long as life endures. Goodbye, Rufka. <laughs>
I do. I've heard, honey. Shikaneda told me all about the wonderful news. Father wants me to go, of course. And but... your father's right. Of course you must go. You must grasp the opportunity. You owe it to your career and to your talent. And our opera. And Pamina. Oh, I'm sure Shikaneda can find another singer. And you mustn't worry about the magic flute as long as I'm here. You mustn't let that keep you a prisoner here forever. It's not for that. But I have another reason to stay not here. Not just for us. Not for you, nor for me. A talent like yours is very demanding. It requires many sacrifices. You can't always do what you want to. Please don't send me away now. Let me stay with you. But, my dear child, you'll see how wonderful it is. You'll see the world, Italy, France and England, and you will return the most renowned opera singer of all. And the humble composer, Herr Mozart, will be proud to write a little aria for the prima donna for whom he once wrote Pamina. Please, you mustn't speak like that. Please. You will leave. I want you to obey your father, honey. Please do as I say. Maestro Mozart, don't you feel well? Oh, it's you, Doctor. Those pains troubling you again? Oh, no, no. I just feel a little tired. A little past. You shouldn't work so hard. There's a limit to your endurance. You know, Maestro, you must take very good care of yourself. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, Doctor. Look, I don't mind if he wants to have a little fun, but when he disappears for two days without even letting us know, then th what's the matter with him, anyway? Nothing. He was in the best of he told me he was madly in love with me. Hmm? He told you. You probably told him first. Of course. And then what? I beg your pardon. I'm a lady, after all. Oh, nimbusil, you, the, how long did this party last? Oh, he left at about five yesterday morning. Dr. Clausett took him back home then. But he's not there either. Nobody knows where he is. So what about my opera? La, 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 la. La, 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 la. That's what he sang all night long. Is this what he sang? Mm -hmm. Stets lose the heiser da, da, bam, bam. Yeah, I think that's my opening aria. But I have no idea when he'll be home. The doctor brought him back yesterday morning. He was in an unspeakable condition. I went to the apothecary for some medicine for him, and when I came back, he was lying on the sofa there, resting, and the doctor was talking to him. Not more than ten minutes after the doctor went away, he got up and ran out of the house, and we haven't seen him since then. Would you give this to him, please? Here he is now. He's got a whole crowd with him. That's enough now. Go on home, all of you, and let him get some rest. Oh. If you don't leave immediately, I'll have you thrown out. No. All right. I'm going away. If anyone asks where, you don't know. You ought to tell him where you're going, in case your wife comes back. Ah, yes, Constance. All right, sit down and play. Bin ich ja stets lustig, heiße Hopsassa, ich Vogelfänger bin bekannt, da alt und jung im ganzen Land. Weiß mit dem Locken umzugehen und mich aufs Pfeifen zu verstehen. 
Drum kann ich froh und lustig sein, denn alle Vögel sind ja mein. Ein Netz für Mädchen möchte ich, ich bin sie gut und weiß für mich. Dann sperrte ich sie bei mir ein und alle Mädchen wären mein. This was left for you. Herr von Bondini has set the departure for tomorrow morning at nine. I shall soon visit all the places you told me about. Milan, Rome, Paris, London. Whatever should separate us will always be united by your music. I'm going to see old Valentin in Josefstorf and so. I want you to bring my things to the Lion's Inn. Zuster will do something yes. for me. Go to Baden tomorrow. Look after Constantia, will you? Of course. He's gone. You saw him? Poor man. Hey, coachman, you're there. Uh, put the things up on the top, eh? I just want to say goodbye to Dr. Klossen. All right. Oh, doctor. Ah, oh, but Mademoiselle got me. <laughs> you ready to leave? Yes. How is he now, doctor? Well, uh, I don't know. He seems to have vanished. I haven't heard from him for two days. Yes, Hans told me that. He took it very hard when he learned you were going away. It will take him some time to get over it, I'm afraid. It was his wish. And he's right. When I come back a year from now, it will be easier for him. And for me. Yeah, a year from now, everything will be quite different. Uh, well, a whole year. Uh, do you plan to stay away for a whole year? Doctor, what did you mean in a year things will be quite different? Why, nothing at all, my dear. It's just that so much can happen in a year. What are you trying to say? Oh, my goodness, You I... have something specific in mind and you won't tell me what. Why not at all? A year from now, you won't be here anymore. That's it, isn't it? Come now, child, you mustn't get so upset. Doctor, I want the truth. Do you mean, Doctor, do you mean he'll be... Come, come now, he's ill, but he'll get better again. No. You know better, Dr. Klaus. He's fatally ill, and I will never see him again. That's something no one can say. Where did you get such an idea? In a year, you'll come back, he'll be better, you'll see. Now have a good journey and a successful tour, my dear. Where has she disappeared to now? Dove adesso? Where is she? Here before God, I have something to say. I cannot leave. What did you say? I must stay with him. Come outside. This is no place to talk of such things. Please, Father, forgive me for disobeying. But there's nothing more to discuss. I shall go to him. I think you've lost your reason. But he needs me. I know it. 
I know he really wants me to remain. You don't know what you're talking about. He's a married man. Do you want to bring disgrace on us all? He loves me. You gave me your promise. You said you'll never see him again. That was before I knew that... Knew what? That I, I'll never see him again if I leave now. I never heard of such nonsense. You're leaving with Herr von Bondini. This very moment. Or else. Let me talk. Or else you're no longer my daughter. You understand? I mean it. Neither I nor your mother will ever speak to you again. Oh, my poor child. Look at the flowers. Men might learn how to live from them. They understand life. But human beings, ah. They are far too agitated. Requiem? I sent her away because I'm a coward. Yet she wanted to stay, in spite of everything. Why, it's a young woman. Could she be coming to see us? Still sleeping, the poor girl. Just think of it. 
across the way from Vienna on foot. It was brave of her. It's an example for me. Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> now I can go back to work on the opera. Have I told you the story of the magic flute? Try to imagine this. There's a prince and princess, Tamino and Pamina. Egypt, the Nile, the pyramids, the Sphinx, the queen of the night. Isis and Osiris. People call him a fool, but he's smarter than all of them put together. Mm -hmm. As an actor on the stage, he always played kings. Now he lives with his flowers. I wish that I were the Kaiser, the Kaiser. I'd take the Orient and make the oxen and quake. I'd break my enemies. And all the wide world would be mine. The whole wide world would be mine. Oh! oh. I knew him when I was a boy back in Salzburg. And wherever I don't know where to turn, I come to Do you remember? <laughs> now I'll finish writing the magic. And then I'll show you the world. England, France, Italy. I'll make you famous. We don't need any bambini. And then I'll write songs for you. Lots of love songs. And Constanze will understand. And forgive me. She's the finest person in the world. Dinner is on the table! Come and eat! Madame? Dinner is sir. Last one there gets the bones. Come on! I'm a deal! I'm a deal!
Nothing at all. You've just gone up the hill too fast. It's nothing. No. No, no. No, Valentine. This is a warning. what you have to do, the opera, the requiem, whatever you've started. Every man's life is short enough. And she knew it. She came because she knew it. That's why she refused to leave. That's why she came back to me. Perhaps it's better this way. It'll be easier for her later. Yes, it's better this way. Minas Aria. Tomorrow we'll go back to Vienna. Back to the theater. To Chicaneda. And to our rehearsals. No! I'm fed up! I'll find myself another composer and another Pamina. There. I won't let anybody spoil my opera if it means I have to compose it myself. And you sing Pamina also? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? You stupid ass. Look! We just found this in his workroom. Pennebeck thinks it may be Papageno's aria. He pasted the pieces together. Don't grab like that. It'll tear again. Why, of course this is the voice part. Here, play it for me. Verzehren. Doch küsst mich ein weiblicher Mund, so bin ich schon wieder gesund. Doch küsst mich ein weiblicher Mund. Doch küsst mich ein weiblicher Mund, und so bin ich schon wieder gesund. Schon wieder gesund. Schon wieder gesund. Look who's here. Yes. I want to rehearse, please. To rehearse? Oh, why, of course. Did you hear that? Everyone at your place. I won't ask where you've been. 
main thing is you're back with us. And oh dear Annie, our little Parmenia. You need the music? You go on stage. Yeah. Her father is coming. Distribute the parts. Benissimo, gentlemen. The strings consentimento. Next rehearsal tomorrow morning with the whole orchestra, please. Stage director, Messieurs Girl, Jacques, Noussel, Mademoiselle Hofer and Gottlieb. Madame has returned. She arrived about a half hour ago. Constance. 
But why didn't she write? I'd have met her. came to the house again yesterday. He wanted to know if the Requiem has been finished. There's very little time left, he said. He is coming back in a day or two. I see. I'll tell the maestro. Oh, Constanze, you're home again. Let me look at you. You're looking fine. How's your foot? Oh, the foot? Oh, it's much better. bottom. When I put it in the water, I'll buy you a new one that won't have any holes in it, or a ship with two holes, so the water will run out of the other side. <laughs> Admiral, you still know your father? Mm -hmm. I have so many things to tell you, Stancy, but one thing at a time. First, my opera's going well. Next, I've been given the commission from the Bohemian court. They gave me a 200 gulden advance. And then when I finish the Requiem, I'll receive 50 ducats more. Now, what do you think of that, huh? Figure that out. Aren't you glad? Yes, of course, it's fine, but... Wolfgang... Haven't you any other news for me? Uh, Mother wrote me about it, and you Yosefa wrote to me, and of course, so did Sophie. Louisa was the only one who didn't, but she's on your side. At first, I simply didn't know what I should do. I just couldn't imagine what was happening. Then I said to myself, I really have no right to judge you so harshly. What you need for your music, you can't find in me. And so, I will be satisfied with what is left for me. Up till now, there's always been so much work on us. I want you to be happy. We'll always be together, Stancy. Oh, that's so good, Oscar. That's so good. Of course, I'm really very happy that things are going to be better for us. Especially with the commission from Prague. And the magic flute will be a great success.
better if someone took her away from you. You're right. Can she spend the night at your house? Yes, of course she can. Frau Constance is upstairs with her sister Sophie, Herr Süßmeier and Dr. Closet. Ashamed even to show Sophie. my face. That's that awful girl, the one I wrote you yes, about. I know. He often spoke to me about you. And I'm sure he'd be glad you came this evening. If you wish, you can go upstairs. Died, Bella Sutton, I don't know. The musician from Rowenstein got Ah, uh, that one. Hardly anyone at the funeral, is there? Hans, look. I'm going to go back and stay with Frau Constanze. Go get Dr. Closet. She might need him after what she's gone through. Tonight. So do I. Yes, and I'm sure he'd understand. He wanted to take care of us. Come on. It's much too far to the cemetery. We can't walk in this awful weather. Let's go back in my carriage. We've done our duty, Maestro Salieri.
go, huh? Wait, I don't know what's the matter with people these days. Can't rely on anybody. What the devil, how can we get a performance underway? Why don't you send someone to a house? Forgive me. I know how you must feel. We've called on Madame Chagall. She can substitute for you. I will sing tonight. And tomorrow. And every day, as long as I can sing. In his music, he'll be with us forever. And he wants us to sing it and to play. As he himself taught us to. All of us. Camina, Camino, Patageno. On stage, our Camino is ready to sing. Everyone, Camino, Papagena, everyone, ring up the Chelsea. 